All right, so Savini and I were talking, and we need to have an entire episode on on bread puns. So we're gonna have a uh, a remix to the intro, and it's gonna be featuring Buster Rye <laughs> and Big Bun. <laughs> Buster Rye's new uh, new new hit single is called "Bake Your Neck." So Savinia says, uh, we need some country songs like Rye, Are You Leaving Me? <laughs> <laughs> or, and I said, uh, I said, no, we need, to go, we need to go more Motown. I know you want to need me, but I refuse to let you do. <laughs> Job. Yeah. Your vibe. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'ma hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. So Monday morning, um, just getting a bunch of stuff done on the computer here, but we're uh, recording the first two episodes of the Breadwinner podcast. Got Andy Frisella and uh, Sean Whalen. Uh, so we're recording those at one and two. Uh, let's just start my schedule here. Just got a bunch of just busy work, craziness going on today. <laughs> Ah, welcome to the Breadwinner Podcast. Everything sounds so much better for this. What side of America do you rest in? I'm blue. Okay. This is the Breadwinner Podcast. Hosted by entrepreneur, influencer, and sales wolf, Tyler Harris. Bring you the insights from the most successful forward thinking entrepreneurs and influencers. So that you can rise to the top and make more dough. Now, let's get into the show. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris from The Daily Bread, and I am your, the host of The Breadwinner Podcast. And this is our very first episode, and I am humbled and honored to have with us a very special guest. Over the past three and a half years, as I have waged war on personal change, this guy has been in my ear telling me to be patient and ultimately do it anyway. And if you looked at my phone right now, his podcast, The MF CEO Project, is the only podcast that I'm actually subscribed to. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Andy Frisella uh, to give a quick introduction and we'll get right into the questions. Man, I cannot thank you anymore <laughs> for being here with us, man. Oh, bro, it's my pleasure, man. Um, I think it's exciting what you're doing and, and, you know, getting, it's been fun to watch you start to develop your own brand and get this podcast up and running. And, uh, I'm excited to be a part of it, especially with it being the first episode. I appreciate that. So tell everybody a little bit about who you are. Oh man, I'm, uh, I'm basically just a regular dude, just like everybody else. But, uh, I happen to have found some success in the entrepreneur world and, um, been in business for almost 18 years. Uh, have a bunch, a number of very successful companies. But man, really, what I am is is uh, not, is somebody who just made a list of shit that needed to be done, and I did it. And that's what separates me from everybody else. Man, I appreciate that, and that, and I think that's what in the, from the very beginning drew me to your podcast, which ultimately drew me to all of your content. Is that it was real? It wasn't. You weren't getting on there telling people like, "Hey, guys, this is this is super easy. Like, let me plug you into my funnel, and I can make you successful." You were like, "No, this took eighteen years. Like the first X number of years, I made nothing, and then after doing it anyway, do it anyway, do it anyway, do it anyway. Over years of hard work." That's what ultimately made me successful. So you weren't painting this like rainbows and unicorns and fairy dust, right? I think that's the biggest problem with this with this whole entire space right now is that, you know, because most people aren't close to someone who's, uh, you know, very successful, multimillionaire business person, 
they develop this magical sense about it. And they think that somebody else or these certain people have the secret and they don't have it. And a lot of, you know, people take advantage of that. They, it's just like, you know, when people tell you, you could take a supplement and it's going to rip off 50 pounds in two months, you know, they take advantage of people's, um, lack of knowledge on the subject. And dude, it's not right. I love that, man. Cause the, the magic behind that is you, you got fed up with it and all this crap that was out there, all the noise, but instead of just stopping there, you said, I'm going to do something about it. And you actually went out and took responsibility and, and started that podcast to put that message out there to be a, to be the, um, uh, the difference in all of that freaking noise, which is incredible. Like I was on a, upon a podcast the other day when, and they asked me like, who are you? And it just kind of like hit me in my, in like, it just hit my brain. Like at that exact moment, I was like, I'm just an ordinary person trying to do extraordinary things by doing the extra. <laughs> Dude. And that's it, man. You know, we're always told about the stories of winning and, and it, because we're not told the backstory of any of those things, we're not told about the 20 years that actor put into perfecting his craft or the 20 years that business person put into building the structure underneath them that allowed him to gain success. We assume that it's, it really is quick and easy because we're not told those things. And, you know, telling someone the story of the grind and, and the grit and the dirty shit they had to do to get where they ha- to get where they are. And by dirty, I don't mean like illegal. I just mean, you know, getting in the dirt and, yeah. uh, it's not told man, because it's not sexy. You know, no one wants to tell someone, Hey, yeah, you could be a fucking millionaire, but give me 20 years of your life. You know what I mean? And I just, dude, I just get tired of hearing it. Maybe it is easy for other people, dude, but I can tell you this. I don't know one. I know a lot of successful people, a lot of millionaires and a couple billionaires that I talk to on a regular basis and not one of them did it in 12 months or two years or five years. It took 10 years minimum. And I think letting people know the expectation is important because, and I always use this analogy, you know, when I, when I used to play high school football, my coaches would do this shit. And and I think you played sports too. Um, my, my, my coach would do this thing where they'd say, okay, guys, we're going to run, we're going to run sprints. And they would never tell you how many sprints you were going to run. They would just say, we're going to run sprints. And so the whole time, you're running, you're running, you're running, you're running, you're running. You don't know how far along you are. And that's most people right now in business. You know, they see these stories of three years, two years, five years, and then they're doing something for six years or seven years, and they think they're doing something wrong. So they end up quitting. When in reality, if they would have stuck with it ten more or three more years, they would have had something going, like something big going. And, and I've always been the type that when I used to have to run sprints, if the coach said, hey, we're going to run 20 sprints, Dude, I ran my ass off for 20 sprints because I knew how long it was going to take and I would be done. And I didn't have that anger or anxiety or getting frustrated because I didn't know how far along I was in the process. And these guys who were coming out and selling people on this idea of get rich quick, easy success, blah, 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 blah. It's amplified because of the Internet. I mean, there's always been those guys, but now there's tens of thousands of them. And that hurts people because young people who are successful – and who, who, who would normally be successful are getting five, six years in and they think, fuck, I'm not getting good at this. And so they quit and they say, dude, entrepreneurship wasn't for me because of a bullshit standard that was imposed by a bunch of people trying to take money out of their pocket. And that, to me, is the biggest disappointment right now in this space. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that was the whole reason why I began to document my life on social media because I felt like the person from, you know, 50 to, you know, call it 150,000 in income, they only had two people to look towards in social media to get advice, to get motivation, inspiration. That was the multi, 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 multi millionaire that was living a lifestyle that was unrelatable to them or someone that was faking like they were like that. Exactly. And that was what I loved about your podcast is because you were at that level of success, but you were giving them the real information, not just the, the, the surface level stuff that everybody didn't need. So kind of basically what they were seeing was this misconception from a lot of crap out there. And that leads me right into this first question was, which is what misconception do people have about you that you'd like to set straight? Um, I think (laughs) this is going to sound kind of funny. 